going getting back to these flashcards of of GOPdom. Uh, I, I want let's let's hit the economy one because that's I think that's a, a big issue uh, to people since since people are out of work since people are uh, you know on jobs that they really would rather not be doing they, you know they since since they've lost their jobs in in what their actual field is they're on to second jobs uh, so on the economy we need to start growing America's economy instead of Washington's economy so that hard-working Americans see better wages and more opportunity. How do we fix that? How do we make that something that's a little bit more uh, appealing to somebody who's out of work? How do you message that? One thing I like about it, one thing I think is in the right direction about it, here I am, I'm going to be positive, is the contrast between Washington and Main Street. If they had put it in words that were better contrasting, there, I think it would have been a better hit because you can see how the Washington class lives. You can see how the political class lives. You can look at the success and the growth around that area of Virginia and whatever and, and tell how much better it's doing than the rest of the country. It's the district, you know, it's the capital compared to all the districts. It's the, the whole dichotomy around the uh, Hunger Games business. Using that contrast is good. The language in which I think they did it was lukewarm. Prosperity for all? I don't know. Sure. What was that? Prosperity for all, not just Washington, but a prosperity for all kind of thing. And of course, the, the Hunger like Games tie-in is really good. You know, I would like to see a suggestion. I mean, we want to improve the economy by doing this. We're going to lower taxes by you know, doing this. I don't know. Like, give examples. That's what I like about Mike Lee's speeches when he goes out. Is he says, "I want. We need to fix the economy. Let's increase the earned income or the child tax credit, and let's do it out of payroll taxes as well. So if you know, so that you still get the benefit, it I helps to see how it's going to help you." I think what you do there, though, is you're getting into step two. This is really the principles they want to anchor around, and then there should be plans that reflect those. I agree with you completely. It's much better to have the detail around those things, but that's the next level down when people are, are after they've assimilated that concept of the economy, here's how, you know, here's what we believe about how to fix the economy. Then you get into detail. It's also perilous to offer plans without getting, you know, to a presidential election, you know, and letting a candidate do your speaking for you because they're going to be butchered and massacred. Every plan every conservative has ever put out, especially when it's been put out way ahead of something, has been butchered by the left, by critics who read things into it, who misrepresent it. It's dangerous to put those ideas out. I'm not saying they shouldn't. I'm just telling you how it goes. What about this? Grandma going over the cliff in the wheelchair is what happens. What about the, offer those plans? Freedom creates, control kills. The more of your money we control in Washington, the fewer jobs you'll create. I think that's definitely a step in the right direction. Uh, getting that contrast out there, talking about Washington, D.C., hoarding the money, uh, I, I think is, is a, a really good point to try and play the income inequality game except throw it at the fact that the government is taking all of this money and using it and spending it in ways that they see fit instead of the ways that we see fit. Fishy? Here's why that's also perilous, because the very people that are charged with doing the messaging here, in this case the RNC, have very good relationships with uh, a lot of the Republican office holders in Washington and if you're viewed as a party that is attacking its own members from that standpoint you are going to get dinged for that on your own side. You have to build your brand but at the same time you have to create the boogeyman that is Washington and that's a hard line to walk. It was the best speech I've seen in years. And, and it wasn't rah-rah. It was showing people how to win others to us.